Okay, I think we're live. I think, yeah. Okay, there we everyone. Are. Now we're live. Welcome. And uh, if you're hearing us okay and seeing us okay, why don't you just uh, type us a little chat note? Yeah, go to the, the right chat side. box. And, and if you're having any trouble uh, listening to us or, 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 or seeing us, let us know. Not that we can do anything about it. Yeah. But. <laughs> but at least we know. <laughs> no, we, we will try to do something about it. And uh, in a couple of seconds, we will get going with the with the webinar content. We are all set to go. And uh, we'll give you a few seconds to make sure that all your equipment is working properly. And uh, I think on our side, the equipment is working properly. So um, let's take uh, just we do it? a minute or so and get going. Oh, okay. So if you can hear us, if you can hear us and you can see us, go ahead and type yes. And if you have any trouble, go ahead and type no or uh, the fact that you cannot hear and we'll try to, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what the problem may be. Um, right now, what we're getting is uh, that uh, our equipment is working properly. Okay. So, yep, there we go. The equipment is working properly. So, I think we should launch. Okay, what do you think? let's get going. Yeah? Perfect. So, again, welcome everyone. We're going to switch over to a PowerPoint. A PowerPoint pretty soon. But first of all, in the interest of, of uh, politeness, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for this uh, webinar. We're planning on 60 minutes, right? We're planning on 60 minutes today. And uh, I am Gerard, principal with the Leonardo Group. And I'm Richard Ron, also co-principal with Leonardo Group. And uh, Gerard and I have been working together for longer than... A very 20, long time. 20, 20, uh, 20 plus years. Yeah, yeah. including, including uh, eight books. I was doing the math this morning and including eight books written together. So we've been at it for quite some time. And um, I'm it, still loving it. Still yeah, loving I'm still it. loving it. And still it, fresh. A year or so ago, we decided to uh, share more of our knowledge beyond the workshops we do, the live workshops we do. So we decided to do more of these webinars. And we will continue to do more as we get better with the technology. And technology is getting just incredible these days. So we're going to continue on that path. So today's uh, webinar is on the topic of design. Many of you are lean practitioners, lean experts. And uh, if, if you are a lean expert, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the Lean Enterprise Institute and the folks that actually coined the term lean. Richard and I are, are of such age that when we started working, the term lean wasn't around. And uh, the term is very new, and it was coined by uh, Professor Womack and um, Professor Jones, uh, one from MIT and the, other one, and the other one from the University of Cardiff. And uh, they, they have been doing a very good job in, in the brand recognition department. That's why many of us decided to adopt the use of the term lean. And one thing that Dr. Womack did, did very well before he retired was putting out these uh, monthly um, uh, newsletters, uh, not newsletters, letters to, to his followers. And, and, and they all talked about some case study or, or, or some issue around Kaizen. And, and the word Kaizen was used a lot two or three letters before he announced his retirement, he put out a letter that I thought was probably the best one he ever wrote. And that was one in which he did, I, I don't know if to call it a mea culpa or something along those lines, but what he did say was, hey, I think I may have been misleading you all these years with emphasizing Kaizen so much and not emphasizing design, designing the best possible value stream, the best possible manufacturing line and value stream in general terms, because it applies to more than just manufacturing. First, focus on a good line design because trying to fix a bad line design with Kaizen may just be almost a fool's errand. 
So that's what we're going to be talking about today, designing that value stream from scratch to be the best possible value stream you can have. That's what we're calling this, designing the perfect value stream. We're going to propose to you the use of a roadmap, a set of steps for that. And I think that's enough for an intro. Okay. And, you know, another another uh, comment just to add to what Gerard was saying that, that I was thinking about before this webinar was when you talk about design, you're kind of implying a new design or a new product or a new project and new opportunity for improvement. And if you're, if you're thinking in terms of an entirely new production line, for example, in manufacturing, uh, those opportunities are rare. They don't come along all that often in your entire career, yeah. probably. But uh, don't, don't be misled. When we say design, we're primarily, I would say, talking about the ability to take what we'll share with you here in just a, just a minute to existing processes, uh, existing value streams, and just overlaying this design on top of it as, as essentially a Kaizen approach. But it's a, it's a holistic approach to your uh, existing processes using this step-by-step -step methodology that's quite detailed. And I think you're going to get a lot better results as opposed to a piecemeal or a siloed or a bit-by-bit -bit, uh, kind of Kaizen strategy. Yeah, not, not nibbling around the edges, right? What you right. want to do is to properly redesign the processes completely. Uh, to, to improve the entire value stream rather than bits and pieces. Yes, you might be able to, to set up a machine or turn over an OR, an operating room, at the speed of light, but if everything else is still slow, well, who's going to see the benefits? Okay, so let's get going here. I'm going to turn off the camera and I'm going to turn on screen share. And here we go. Sounds good. Everybody should be able to see this uh, PowerPoint that we're going to be using as the base for our presentation. Okay, so let's get right into it. And let's start, we thought we'd start with just a, a introduction uh, to where lean benefits actually come from. People like lean because they get benefits from lean. In fact, I, I don't know of really any other kind of discipline or improvement methodology where you can get the kind of results that you get in lean. I remember, uh, it was just a management consultant talked to me years ago and he said, you know, uh, I go into companies and I, tr I try to help them and, you know, try to try to be smart and apply what we know. But I'm never sure exactly, you know, what we've actually accomplished. But with lean, it's pretty different. It's pretty black and white and and sometimes just really dramatic. Oh, yeah. And by the end of the week, you get to see something right by when you bring a line live you see the benefits right there, right in front of you. So it is it is different. And actually, it, it made, it, at least for me, my life as a consultant, a, a, a lot more fulfilling. Okay, so we have Kaizen. You all are probably familiar with that term, right? Continuous improvement. And for companies that don't like to use too many Japanese words, we have this, uh, there are other terms that people use like RIE, rapid improvement event. Um, I think Boeing uses that. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, but other companies. So that's an option. But uh, when we talk about Kaizen, what we're often talking about are small suggestions, you know, continuous improvement. And sometimes that word Kaizen is almost synonymous with employee involvement type of program where uh, employees will suggest small improvements in their area, typically, that affect their work area. And, and then with the help of a team leader or a supervisor, those small ideas get implemented. And if you have enough of them, then you can really make serious progress over time. That's often what we think of in terms of Kaizen. Or a slightly bigger Kaizen might be a Kaizen event, a week-long event, where you have an opportunity that's bigger than just a couple hours, and you really need a team and maybe a small budget. But that's often what we mean by Kaizen. But we have this other Japanese term, term Kaikaku, which... Uh, is kind of like super Kaizen, right? Or bigger project. And that's primarily what we're talking about here. Uh, typically a bigger scope initiative that is beyond even a week. It's multi-week, you know, multi-people, bigger budget. But of course the benefits are going to be bigger. So how much bigger yeah. are these benefits gonna be? Exactly. Well, there was a study done in Japan. You can read about this in the book, Toyota Kata, page 178, uh, where a Japanese- that? Yeah. Well, I've had to look it up often enough because <laughs> people challenge me. So where did you where did you come up with that tidbit of information? Uh, 
And a Japanese professor actually looked into this. So where are the hard dollar benefits, you know, the dark green dollar benefits coming from in Kaizen or, or, or in Lean, looking primarily at Toyota. And so what he discovered was interesting. So hard dollar benefits, we have suggestions, the suggestion system, or bigger projects, the Kaikaku projects. In, in, in the suggestion system, to, to, to get a good picture of that, take a look at a book by Norman Bodek, yep. right? Um, the Idea Generator. The Idea Generator, and he calls it Quick and Easy Kaizen. That's, the, again, the small Kaizen, which, by the way, is supposed to be the overwhelming majority of Kaizens, right? So 90% of, of all improvement projects would be this type of Kaizen, which bring with them approximately 10% of the benefits. See the inverse relationship there? So 10%, so 90% of the hard dollar benefits come from these larger projects that are led not by operators, although they could be on the team, but they're led by engineers, you know, industrial engineers, manufacturing engineers, managers, that level of initiative and typically bigger in scope. It, it, normally, this type of project will not include a trial and error type of approach. Hey, let's try this, see if it works. This is going to be much more scientific. There is going to be a calculation of resources, balancing, applying different balancing tools. Uh, hopefully, there will be a simulation modeling. That's what we're looking at. That is what we're going to be focusing on. Yeah, and by the way, uh, when we talk about uh, not being able to uh, engage in improvements after the fact, trial and error, you know, tweaking after the fact, this becomes more and more important as we move towards more and more automation. I'm reading a great book called The Inevitable 12 Technological Changes. And one of the comments in this book is that we can expect in the future, saying over the next coming decades, to see what are now primarily people doing the work types of, uh, of processes being converted over to, to automation more and more. And the more you're automated, the more you better get it right the first time. Yeah. Because when you put in place an automated line, it's a lot harder to go back and change it later yeah. on. Asking asking Bob or Joanne to you know make it make a small change to rebalance the line are relatively easy. Having to to reprogram a robot that's that's quite a bit more work. Yeah. So again, the value of what we're going to be talking about here is the roadmap to actually achieve that and get it right up front, get it right the first time, rather than uh, having to make too many adjustments later on. Okay, so here's the roadmap, and uh, by roadmap we mean it's a flowchart, but with some commentary, some text in a in an attractive graphical format, and you can download this as a PDF. Uh, it's actually 15 pages, so it's not a one-page roadmap. It's quite a lot of detail here, mm -hmm. and there's a pop-up, I think, on your uh, on your screen that you can use to download this this PDF. Or a pop-up should be appearing on your screen yeah. pretty soon. And what you're going to notice, the reason why this is 15 pages, even though we're going to focus only on the highest level one, the 1.0, if you can look at the upper right-hand corner of this uh, roadmap says level 1.0. That's the one we're going to be focusing on. And we're going to be going through all these phases, all those little uh, blue rectangles. Those are the phases. We're going to be speaking to each one of those. And you're going to notice that most of them have that little drill, red drill uh, icon. That means drill down. And that, in if you look, under that, those will be the other pages that take you to the detailed sub roadmaps on how we're proposing that you carry out each one of these phases. So that's why this is 15 pages. This is normally for sale and, and for attending this workshop, we're making this available for you uh, for free. Now we've added, we continue to, to modify this as we learn, learn new things and we've added to this roadmap uh, this box here, 1.7, I'm sure you probably can't read this on your screen, but 1.7, which is uh, simulation modeling. And we're becoming more and more convinced that this needs to be a part of your strategy, uh, especially if you have uh, a lot of uh, interdependent processes or uh, a lot of variability. And a mixed model line, which is our area of specialty, is inherently variable because you have different products and different work content. So even in the best of, the best of times, you still have 
that kind of variability to deal with, even if you don't have process level or human variability, which you probably have as well. So simulation modeling is, uh, is something that we're taking very seriously and we've included it in the roadmap. You know, we used to think of simulation modeling us, consultants, right? Doing line design for over 20 years, actually 23 by now, right? And we used to think of it as, well, back 20 some years ago was, well, yeah, it would be nice, but it was really unaffordable. We're talking about $20,000 for a piece of software that then would take months to put together a, a, a simulation model. So it was, well, yeah, it would be nice. And then we, we started, you know, reviewing our position and, and it was, well, yeah, it's optional. Now, we don't see it more anymore as optional. This is something that you must do, unless you want to put a lot of hours into balancing the line when you bring it live. Because you're going to be balancing on paper and balancing the line when you bring it live. What we're proposing here is an intermediate step that is an absolutely fail-safe step, and that is uh, to, to balance the line using simulation model or mm. optimizing the line. So we'll have a chance to talk about that when we get to that, uh, that step. Now, uh, here's the roadmap in a little bit bigger view. Again, as Gerard said, we're going to be walking through each of these phases one by one, but pretty quickly. We got 12 of them to get through, and yeah. uh, I'm just watching the clock here, so uh, not a whole lot of time to dwell on any, any one of these, but we'll be reviewing with you what this looks like. We'll give an overview of each one, and don't worry if you cannot read it right now, because we're going to, take, we're going to be taking every phase and, and show you a little, a little blow up picture of each one. Okay, now here's something else we've added to our roadmap recently in this latest version, the 2016 version. We've added this little symbol of a men, men at work. And what that's intended to indicate is that as we go through or as you go through this process, there, there, there are specific steps where you really need to stop and report out basically, if this were a project you're working on. So each one of these little triangles represents a form that you would fill out or a or a line that you uh, line design uh, layout that you'd present or an excel worksheet that you'd fill out with some calculations there's some kind of deliverable associated with each one of these triangles so we're enhancing the roadmap with that kind of reminder that this is a place where you'd want to stop and actually deliver something to the team or to to your, your steering committee for example yeah and we started adding these because we made them uh, as part of the deliverable for our uh, certification candidates. We, we are starting a certification program. And uh, when you are asking someone or someone is uh, pursuing a certification on mixed model line design, well, every time they complete a phase or, or a specific task, they need to prove that they have completed it. So what, what you see there, the D111, for example, that refers to a specific document that we have for our uh, certification candidates. Okay. So with that, I think we're ready to jump into the specific steps. So we're walking you through the high level roadmap, the level one or 1 1.0. And as a reminder, again, this drill means there's more to this. This is just one little box on create assessment and master plan, for example. But there's obviously a lot that goes into that create assessment and master plan, more, more, more than just that simple little statement. So you'll have a chance when you download the document to see all the detail that is behind this. But what we, what we want to do here in this webinar is just kind of review quickly what's, what's involved with each so, of these. So logically, we're talking about designing the perfect value stream. So for those of you in the manufacturing world, designing a linked and balanced manufacturing line. Right, so the first thing you needed to know before you jump in and start gathering data and doing calculations is to get a good picture of where you are today. Understand the current state of your line by doing an assessment and developing a master plan that tells the world, primarily management, this is where we're going, this is where we want to go. So that is the goal of this first Phase to develop a master plan. And if you look into the, the sub roadmap, which is, by the way, the one we were just showing a few minutes ago, you will see that we are proposing some basic elements 
for this uh, self-assessment or, or, or this initial current state assessment, things like do a value stream analysis of the line, develop the list of opportunities for improvement, right? And many of them will be solved through the line design. Then put together a, a list of expected benefits, a, a schedule, and go ahead and publish that. Don't don't write a Bible, mean, meaning meaning a long a long uh, war document. piece, war and peace, war and peace. Book exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't write war and peace, but make sure that you have a document that people can refer to and know where you are and where you're going. That's the goal of this first phase before you jump in. Sounds good. And there's another quick assessment we sometimes do: read a plant fast. So you can do a Google search on that. That was a uh, an article that was uh, published in the Harvard Business Review in about 2002, I think it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, that gives you uh, kind of a, an alternate view, yeah. but very much with a lean emphasis. Uh, yeah, and, and that's, that's a, a, an article we always recommend. We recommend it in class. And as a matter of fact, there is even a website. I think it's called readaplanfast.com. Yeah, oh yeah, they've turned yeah. a whole business, they turned yeah. that into a whole yeah. it, enterprise. It, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> How how can you make a business out of ninety minutes? Hey, it's a good thing, but it's it's actually a very good assessment style. We like the questions they use, and we definitely recommend you take a look at it. Read a plan fast. Uh, Eugene Goodson, I believe, um, Horror Business Review, and I think the year two thousand. Yep. Okay. So once we have our plan in place, then we want to move on. Uh, Let's see. There we go. Perfect. And we're now at the next step. So once we know what the target area is that we're going to be focusing on, and that came out of this assessment and our master plan, now we're ready to start gathering some data. Yeah, now, now that you know where you're going, this is that phase where the light at the end of the tunnel is temporarily turned off <laughs> because you're going to be gathering data. There's a lot of work to do here. Uh, to design any line, you need to know what you're building, how you're building it. So as you can tell here from this list, you're going to be gathering data on the products you're going to build, the volumes, the desired volumes from which you're going to calculate tag time. One of the, the, the greatest mis misunderstandings of tag time is that it is, is related to customer demand. Customer demand is daily. This is a desired volume, and that is what, where you calculate tag time from, um, it, it, which is a statement of, of, of expected customer demand. It's not daily customer demand. Uh, understand what, what resources you're using, what work content you have, machine labor times, and you will document the flow of each product using the process flow diagrams, which are flow charts that indicate how the product flows from process to process. And those are actually the individual, um, the individual singular volume equations that you will use to develop your um, simulation model. So quite a bit of data to be gathered. Yeah, and the good news here is when we, when we get to it at what, step 1.7, the good news is that when we get to simulation modeling, Basically, a computer model is going to be looking for this same data, which is really good news. If it were totally different data it's looking for, that would be more of a struggle. But it's basically looking for this data. So when you go, whatever software package you happen to be using, it doesn't really matter. It's still looking for the same information on products, processes, work content times, what is the flow, how are they connected, et cetera. And it's looking for a few other things, too, that we haven't captured here, like variability, some understanding of human variability, for example is something you might want to add. But that's really good news, because if you follow this methodology, then when you get to that step 1.7, you're going to be very well prepared to get going right, and build that model. And actually, how this roadmap is built is not overwhelming, because it's just one bit at a time, one bit at a time. When we say, gather data for products, we stop there. So you start building a spreadsheet, and all we want to know is part numbers, part descriptions, right? And then we say, okay, now we get volumes, and then we get processes, and then one step at a time. All right. 
Now, this could be uh, under the umbrella of gather data, but it's so important that we gave it its own, its own phase. Uh, it's really, maybe it should be in parallel with gather data on our roadmap, kind of happens at the same time, and, as opposed to later. But the important issue here is this is a foundational concept for lean, or actually for, for manufacturing. Any line yeah, sign. anything for my Taylor, dad, my Frederick dad, Taylor. Exactly, my dad used to sign lines uh, a long time ago, and, and he knew about standard work definitions. Yeah, so nothing new here, but we need to have this. So uh, detailed work instructions for every product and process combination. And we've added on our form, the form we use, and there are a lot of, lot of uh, options there, but uh, the, the basic minimum requirement for standard work would be a definition of the tasks, the work steps, and the times. Now, we've added something else, too, which is quality. So we separate out, on our form, we separate out the quality instructions from the work itself. So work itself is your, the value adding steps. And then the quality is how do we make sure that those steps were done correctly? Excellent. What do we need to check for? Mm -hmm. And we're separating them so we're very clear about how that happens. We do work, we check our work. We pass it on, and if it's a quality critical step, then we check it again. Which is a technique we refer to as check, do, check. Right. First thing you do is you check prior work, then you do your work, then you check your own work, you pass it on. In that way, you you minimize the probability of passing a defective product to the next person. Now, needless to say, this is not a minor detail, but great to document parts, material, as you go through this process. Because if you don't do it now, if you don't do it as you're documenting the work, then you have to do it later. Because yeah. at some point you need to know where is this material or when is this material actually consumed at the task level, not at the process level. Exactly. It doesn't do you any good to have a big bill of material, but you don't know where those items are actually consumed. And, and when, when you're doing this, if you document parts at the task level, uh, your, your materials team is going to love you because you're, you're providing them with the data they need for their plan for every part and for setting up Kanban. Uh, or for setting up materials in general terms at the workstations. So you will be doing yourself a great favor by including the parts in the standard work definitions. Okay, so this is gonna be critical for, as, we're, as we see coming up, critical for workstation definition or line balancing, you need to have this information, and also critical for times. So where do our work content times come from? They come from here, mm -hmm. right, so. And that is how we calculate number of resources. All right, so, oh, calculate resources. Exactly. Pick of the devil. Right. What, a, what, a, what a great seg <laughs> segue. 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 Uh, when you're writing all the process flow diagrams, you're going to end up with a pretty lengthy list of processes. And a process has a definite start, definite end, and tasks in between. And every task is documented on a standard work definition. A process is work work then be, that can be carried out by a person, a machine, or a combination of both. So you need to know how many of each to deliver the work at the rate that is calculated for the line. So to calculate resources, you need to understand the rate at which the work happens, and that is tag time, which is a calculated value has, has, has nothing to do with the work content. It's completely independent of the work content. And you also need the work content. You need those two things. You compare one against the other, standard time, divided by tact. And with that, you will understand the number of resources. When the standard time is labor, you calculate number of people, which you keep fractional. You round up to the number of workstations or round down in a few cases. And if the standard time is machine time divided by tact, you will calculate number of machines or number of pieces or number of heads, number of spindles, depending on the type of machine. So as you can tell here, for every process using the data we gathered and the basic concept of tag time, calculated tag time and um, documented standard work, the standard time, you will calculate the number of resources for every process. Now remember, these calculations are static calculations based on the data. And even if that data we're using is highly reliable, right? We're confident in the accuracy of that data. 
or the realistic nature of this data we're using. It's still a static calculation. So what you're going to find, I think, very likely, is this is the minimum number of resources, but you may need to be actually adding to it when we get to step 1.7, simulation modeling. Yeah, because what's happening here, again, we are designing this, and it's a very good way of designing a line based on an assumption of mix and volume. Did you see the word there? Did you hear the word there? Assumption of mix and volume. And that is that is the best you can do. With that, you calculate tech. With that, you calculate resources. That's an excellent way of figuring out resources. But do you think that on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to see that same demand? No. You will probably never see demand coming from customers that reflects your assumption of mix and volume. So what's going to happen on a daily basis is maybe your line was designed to build 100 A's and 100 B's uh, or 100 A's and 50 B's, but today you get 75 B's and 90 A's. And the question is, can I do that? And the answer may be yes. The question is, how do you balance the line to be able to do that? And simulation model is what will get you those answers. Okay, so this is a first pass and a necessary one, but be prepared for adjustments in just a few steps here. All right, define workstations. This is also called line balancing, uh, where basically if we're doing work in a sequential way, so as a, an assembly line kind of format, where one person does a piece of the work and then passes it on to another person, if we're doing work in that way, then you have to define who does what. How much? How many of these steps from our standard work definition de definition does each person do? And you want to have the amount of work content for each station be, especially for each product, for each individual product, to be level or even as much as possible. Now, perfection is not going to be possible. It's easy to divide a number on, on a piece of paper or in an Excel worksheet evenly, but in terms of taking actual work steps and dividing them evenly, that's more of a challenge. But you do the best job you can. And this whole activity, which is quite intensive, it's going to take a while to do this because you have to do it product by product and, and define which work gets done where. With considerations like if we install the engine at workstation 10, shouldn't all the engines be installed there? And so when you have different work content, you have to make sure you balance it out to get that to happen. You don't want to be installing a large component at more than one station. And you may be forcing an imbalance by doing that, in which case then you will have to rebalance using the balancing tools. Nothing out of the ordinary there. So the work of defining workstations and applying the balancing tools is, an, is, is, a, is a pretty arduous process, is, is an iterative process too, and in the end what you have is a line that is balanced on a static basis. It's a static balance based on paper, based on calculation. Yeah, we've done a we've done a webinar. I did one about a month ago on this concept of the self balancing line, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is intended to help overcome some of these challenges. But we won't get into that here. Uh, it's an interesting concept, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. worth worth looking at if uh, if that can fit your environment. But in general, what we're talking about is defining the work that gets done at a physical location. We're calling it a workstation, and it's fixed for the for the you know for the duration of that design this workstation has it, it, from task 131 to task 159 and that's it those tasks live there for that one product the next product is again you're going to have to define what tasks live there and with the task will come the uh, the, the actual work content the time the quality criteria the parts and um, the tools. So we'll talk about um, training here in an upcoming phase, but we'll just mention here that once you've done this workstation definition, then people, uh, people clearly, the workers, people doing the work need to be trained in, in that information so people know what to do. And that, that instruction needs to be communicated to them in an easy to consume format, which we're calling graphical work instructions here. So as opposed to reading a lot of text, people working on that line can actually get a sense of the work content as defined by the designers um, in an in a easy to absorb way, a picture basically, or photographs. All right, shall we continue? On to the next phase. All right.
create conceptual layouts. Yes, this is this is a phase that tells you you and you know who you are. You who know CAD and wants to fire up that laptop and start building that line on CAD. It tells you hold your horses, partner. Don't fire up CAD. Leave CAD out. Don't don't bring that laptop just put together a simple conceptual layout on paper, with paper, with any tools other than a computer, uh, on, on, with, with post-its, with, um, with uh, a paper cuts, uh, paper cuts, paper cutouts, <laughs> <laughs> paper cutouts, anything that lets you put together a simple conceptual layout that ignores all possible constraints. Don't, don't worry about the plant. Don't worry about the fact that it's too tall or too low or, or shaped as an L. Whatever the case, ignore all that. Design the ideal line with very simple tools. This will make the CAD section, which is coming, coming soon, this will make that CAD section go very fast and very smooth. All right, IPKs, by the way, we're mentioning the term IPK. Some of you may be familiar with that. That's an in-process Kanban, uh, AKA buffers. Yeah, a signal to work, a signal to, to uh, flex also. Okay. All right, so where are we now? 1.6. Yeah. So now. In-process Kanban. Think about two workstations. I'm sorry, there is a question about in-process Kanban. What is, again, IPK in-process Kanban? Think about, think about a, a two workstations, right? Two people working side by side. I finish my work and I pass it on to Richard to apply more work, right? So unless we have an almost perfect balance, we are going to need between Richard and I a space where I can park the output of my work onto that space. Then Richard will pull from that space into his workstation. What's the goal of that? Is to provide up to one tag time worth of slack, extra time for the two of us to get in sync. If we get out of sync, we have up to one tag time to catch up. Sometimes I'm a little too slow, a little too fast. Sometimes Richard's a little too low, a little too fast. Why? Because we're humans. Then between us, we have that buffer. Normally, the, the, the standard for a mixed model flow line is one unit between two workstations. That is the very basics of an IPK. In process Kanban, Kanban again means signal. So we use that as a signal when that in process Kanban is empty, it's my signal to build the next product and put it on that IPK. That's the basics of IPKs. We could have an entire webinar, maybe we should have an entire webinar on IPKs, but that's the basic answer. Anything else you want to add? Oh, uh, yeah, we could go on, but yeah. uh, th there's a school of thought in Lean that is opposed to buffers or IPKs, saying, well, this is a something you should try to eliminate or get rid of yeah because it's waste yeah it's waste it's additional inventory uh, we don't we don't uh, adhere to that school the way of that way of thinking um because no matter how hard you try no matter how hard you try to level load your line in a mixed model line it's never going to be level yeah. and what you're going to find if you eliminate buffers of this type completely now sometimes you have a large product you've got a a, a green combine <laughs> and, and putting an extra combine between each station is out of the question from a space point of view. So I understand that. But in general, if you don't have IPKs, your throughput, your, your productivity of that line is going to be less. Absolutely. Virtually and, guaranteed. And with large products, that time tend, tends to, to get longer because you, you can't build 200 combines a day. Right or 500 combines a day. Or sell them. <laughs> exactly, it's going to be just a few. So tag time tends to be long. The longer tag time, the less the need for IPKs. The shorter tag time, the more you need them. Okay. Hopefully that answers the question. All right. So here's the issue with simulations. So 1.7. The issue is has to do with variability. So let's let's just 
list the kinds of variability that are not captured in your line design. Just quickly. Number one, you have human variability. So people work faster or slower. So if you have people working next to each other and one is faster or slower, then you have some weighting or some blockage that you need to account for, which your static model, your static Excel calculation does not account for. Second thing is product variability. So in a mixed model line, not everything takes the same amount of work content time to, to build. So you have harder, harder, harder models and easier models, and you need to account for that in terms of variability. Also, you have work time variability. You may not have the same uh, work hours for every single process in your value stream or in that line. So you have to account for that. That adds additional variability. Um, you have machine potentially machine variability, where the cycle time of the machine is not consistent for various reasons. You have changeover, which you might need to account for in that line when you change over from one product to another, right? If you ignore that, then you're actually ignoring time that you're consuming during that working day. So all of that said, uh, if you ignore these things, your calculations can be perfect in Excel, but your actual performance in the real world can be less than you want, sometimes dramatically less, if you don't take into consideration these things. And not just take it in, into consideration, but actually do something about it. And the kind of things you can do are eliminate waste further from your process, or add resources, or rebalance the work better, or add additional buffers. Uh, there are a lot of things you can do to improve the performance of your line. These are all things you, you may not realize until you do this. And uh, that is actually how you improve a line design using simulation. The, the tools, the balancing tools that we teach in class, the static balancing tools are the same tools we use to improve the line in, in the simulation model. So it is, is exactly the same work. The difference is now you can see the line performing in, 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 in simulation mode for in, in 20 seconds you can do an entire day of work or week of work and see how the line performed uh, considering a specific mix that you never thought about. Now we just two weeks ago we just completed uh, just uh, delivered a mixed model simulation class um, for the first time and this is something we're going to be doing on a regular basis. So if you're interested in that just shoot us a note here uh, info on simulation class. We're looking for a venue and date for the next one in the next few months. Yep. Uh, but the beauty of this class is we're talking about all the things we're covering in this workshop in, in detail, but also we're providing you with a simulation software yeah, that, as that, part of the class, which that, is unique. Yeah, that class is very unique from the standpoint that we only dedicate the first maybe four hours to reviewing the line design methodology. So it's better for folks that have attended the mixed model line design workshop and after after those four hours then is 50 percent of the time you are on the simulation software and 50 percent of the time we're explaining to you how to build the model and how to rebalance the line and how to interpret simulation output which can be enormous that's that's <laughs> the key of the class so you 50 percent of the time you are working on rebalancing a series of lines that are the same lines we, or the same line or sections of the line that we teach on the mixed model line design. This, again, we used to think of this as optional, really not anymore. This is not optional. Okay, so plan on that. Now, once we've tested your design with simulation, now we're ready to fire up CAD. Yeah. Before that time would have been premature and you would have been either wasting your time or heading down you know, pathways with a CAD model that make it more and more difficult to want to change it. So that's why we say delay your CAD work until you're actually ready. That is, you have a conceptual layout and you have a tested design. Yeah, yeah. And, and some 15, 16 years ago, uh, we, we tried a method for designing the, the CAD layout and we never went back. Before, we used to put together the conceptual layout and, and pass, it or, pass it on to someone with CAD skills. And, and one day what we did was to bring that person and, and project the layout on a screen with the entire team there. And we started signing the line right there live. Oh, that's by far the best, best method. We never went back. We just don't do it any other way. The CAD section, you do need a 
a pretty patient cat operator because change this change this exactly <laughs> the, the, the same the same uh, uh machine or workstation is going to be moved by pretty much every team member but the result of that process is so much better and the level of consensus of understanding and understanding is so much better i wouldn't do it any other way okay so i think we're in agreed this is a requirement uh, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Then, here we go. Yeah. All right. So now we have a detailed design. Yeah. Right, in CAD, which doesn't exist in real life. Right. In real life, you still have the current line, right? Okay. So again, we had a master plan for this project, but now we need a deployment plan. Meaning, how are we going to make this all happen? So you probably have some long lead items, especially if you're buying uh, additional equipment. Or having things fabricated mm -hmm. right for the new line tooling for example yeah. you have long lead items that need to get going right away uh, so we need to have that in the but in the in the plan also there's if you're gonna be spending money you probably have to get some approval for that yeah. <laughs> that's how what how things work usually so we have to uh, have that presented and signed off on before we can go forward and then we have just your standard project management uh, kinds of activities so tasks times or dates people who's responsible mm -hmm. uh, and and lay it out at in the level of detail you need to actually uh, manage the project right manage the physical implementation of the line is what we're talking about yeah here. there's a very good chance that all the new workstations don't look like the old workstations and that and that from many points of view um, it may be the size of the workstation, the configuration of the workstation, the lighting. We always recommend that you give everything a fresh coat of paint to make it to make it really different from what it was. But then there is the work. The actual work that people do today may be reconfigured and the tasks assigned to different workstations are different. And the parts presentation and the tools and the tools presentation, all that is going to be new and every single workstation is going to need its own mini project plan so how do i make this workstation happen how do i get these tools how do i hang these balancers how do i present these materials all that needs to be answered on this basic um project a project for each workstation and when you when when you put them all together that is your deployment plan for the line yeah the software we're talking about here can range anywhere from excel you know just yeah. a checklist with dates and people to we use something often for simpler projects called basecamp so it's a web-based collaboration tool yeah so it's basically a, a checklist as well right? yeah with, microsoft projects a good tool too that's on I the other myself, extreme, right? yeah i myself I'm, I'm partial to excel i like i like building Again, charts in Excel, they work very well for me. Yeah. All right. Okay, conduct training. So uh, with all the changes that we're contemplating here, people need to know, right? Operators need to know. They may, may not have seen it yet, seen this design or seen the CAD layout. That would be a good thing to share with them, don't mm -hmm. you think? Mm -hmm. But there's specific training. Now, there are two types of training you need to think about. One is the technical training. So you've, if you've rebalanced the line, there are work steps that people need to know, right? Maybe there are already certified operators on the, on the existing line, but on the new one, there may be different steps that they're doing, different line balance, et cetera. So all of that needs to be communicated. And then you have training on general lean principles. If this is a lean initiative that's new to you, so operators need some exposure to things like Kaizen, flow, tack time, quality, check, do, check, standard, you know, standard work definitions and how to use them, uh, graphical work instructions, so on and so forth. We always, we always tell the folks we work with that what we deliver during the line design is a very good line design. But the only way to make it perfect is through the engagement of the folks that do the work every day. And that is an important part of this training. Okay, so now we're ready to go live. Exactly. We flip try to make the a, switch. Yeah, flip, we try to make a big deal out of this. You know, so there's a date, there's a line in the sand, and uh, sometimes you have to do a gradual warm up of the line. You know, debugging, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, Day one, don't bring the the, <laughs> the, the most uh, difficult mix. All right. Uh, day one, give give the folks a break. 
bring an easy mix, ease into it, right? And um, but within again, this is a rule of thumb, but within two weeks, you should see that line fully performing to tap. Yeah, and you're gonna get feedback from the operators. Now, if you sim if you test the model with simulation and you've done your homework, as as we just suggested, then hopefully you're not going to find any big showstoppers. No, you, you should see tag time. You should be able to, to to reach tag time and reach volume a lot quicker if you simulate. I remember one one line live that I worked on way back in the early days. There was a tank to dip a uh, coil in. Oh yeah, I remember that <laughs> <laughs> for for air for uh, air conditioning line. And they decided the old tank looked like horses had been horses and cattle had been <laughs> drinking at it for a few decades. So they got rid of the old tank, got a new tank, but someone forgot to measure all the different coil sizes. And the very first one coming down the line didn't fit in the tank. So old tank, where's the old tank? You know, it's behind the building. Get it out here, fill it up with water to keep the line going. Yeah, yeah that's a little yeah. embarrassing. It was it was to check leaks on the on the <laughs> yeah. on the uh, condensers. Yeah, that was funny. But fun, oh well, fun, not funny at the no, time. Not though. funny at the time. At the time, <laughs> then my blood pressure went up. I remember that one. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then uh, the final step on a roadmap here is now. This would be sometime after the line is up and running. You want to have a, a formal uh, milestone kind of activity where you say yes. We've met our goals. It's performing mm -hmm. per expectations. Uh, so it's a final audit. Remember, we did an audit in the, at the first step. So you might want to do the same audit later on so you can compare apples to apples. So current state, value stream map, future state, value stream map, or it's now, now the current state, but it's the new line. Or if you do a read a plant fast uh, assessment, do it again mm -hmm. on, the, on the new line and be able to compare the new performance. And once we're once you're happy with the performance of your line, then what you do is you set the next target condition. So what's next? That's that's what you need to think about. How do you improve that? What's the next improvement you're going to be doing on this line? Yeah. So there's never any end. Absolutely. But this yeah. is a milestone or recognition. Exactly. That do 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 stop and 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 smell the flowers here because this is this is a, a, a big deal. Yeah. Okay. So with all of that, we presented this webinar as uh, designing the, the perfect value stream or the perfect the line, ultimate value the stream, ultimate, right? yeah. So uh, what, what does that mean? Well, we'll just quickly summarize what we're trying to accomplish here by going through this process. So one of the most important things we're putting at the top of the list anyway is minimum MCT, manufacturing cycle time or manufacturing critical path time, those two acronyms. So we're trying to reduce the time from launch to completion of the product, okay? So that, that's a, a worthy goal that we accomplish through a good design. Now, high quality or zero defects, that's a standard lean goal. High productivity, so a uh, high percentage of the time operators are able to add value. Floor space, minimum, or uh, we didn't say minimum, we said optimal inventory, optimal. Yeah. right? Not necessarily minimal. Yeah, we, we don't believe in just scraping inventory off the floor you know, and, 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 and starving the beast. It, sometimes you need that inventory. We, are, we of course, understand that inventory is, is waste, but we want to optimize the amount of inventory. Okay, working in the face of variability, if we can have a workforce that's flexible, that can move, essentially, to where the work needs to get done in the face of variability, then your productivity is gonna go up, sometimes way up. Oh, so way up. we wanna go uh, go with, with this concept of, uh, foremost in our mind and then flexible schedule what that means is things change right s star 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 happens <laughs> <laughs> so uh we want a design that doesn't choke and die when that schedule changes or the mix changes so we want a robust environment that can respond and still achieve the throughput that you want in the face of uh, changes in mix and yeah. volume so I think uh, by following this process that we just described, you you will accomplish that. Now, here are a couple things that we want to mention to you before we go. Uh, we actually teach this in a three-day workshop. We mentioned this before. And not only that, but for some reason, I guess they like us and they agree with what we're saying, Toyota has opened their doors uh, to hosting these classes. Yeah, we've been partnering with Toyota for, for a few years now. We are the only ones that teach at Toyota. And um, we, we couple the, the workshop with uh, two 
uh, tours that they they give our students. So this is this is a, a very great opportunity to come and learn mixed model line design and to see how the folks at Toyota uh, design their line. So this is a three day workshop at their plant in in beautiful. Um, uh, Columbus, Indiana. The sixth most architecturally significant yeah, city in America. Really a, a beautiful town. Yep. And uh, it, it, the, the amount of seating is limited, only 32 seats. We use, as you can tell there, that that's a picture from, from uh, one of our recent workshops. We use their, they let us use their amphitheater, has only 32 seats. So the sooner you get your seat, the better. And we only and next, do this. We only do this twice a year. Yeah. By the way, mixed model yeah. line design. Mixed model line design twice a year. Yeah. So the, so this is coming up. So again, this is a life change. If you're a lean professional, this is a life changing experience because you'll remember not just what we taught, but you'll remember being there and being out on the factory floor and actually engaging with Toyota engineers and managers. Oh yeah, they 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 two two. Um, of the managers come over for a Q&A session during lunchtime. So they, that is, again, something for what we are eternally grateful. Yeah, and to, a classic, to. classic mixed model environment. Now, if you can't make it to the live class, but you still want to learn this stuff and get some help on it uh, in a formal way, we have an online version of this three-day class that we've created, which is available right now. Yep. So uh, 20 lessons uh, broken down subject by subject. Um, with quizzes, with interactivity as you go through this. So it's another option for you to go through the mixed model line design methodology that we're teaching uh, at your convenience, you know, at your own schedule, 24 seven. And uh, again, this is this is something that um, it is available right now. It's not, not a, a future. And as you know, being able to retain information is 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 hard so this is uh, a concept that we put together uh, we have deployed very successfully and people love it so picture coming to class or finishing the class online and then for 50 weeks we will remind you <laughs> that's that almost a year it. exactly <laughs> right the reason why we want 50 weeks we want to give you a two-week vacation so for 50 weeks you will receive an email and on attached to that email there will be a very short video just picture two or three slides from class and uh, we will uh, we made a video on a specific concept I want to remind you of one concept and after you listen to that five to seven minute video promise only five to seven minutes you will have a a three question quiz and, and the reason for the quiz is because quizzes activate a different part of the brain all right it's not we're tracking the results so again if you think about live class online class memory joggers then your level of retention will greatly increase so, so this is included the memory joggers in in these training yes. opportunities yeah okay so three things we talked about live workshop at toyota coming up at the end of august the online class as an option or in addition to and a full year of memory jogger activities so. yeah and, and, and we put together this this a, a bundle for you because just picture the, the ideal way of going about this is you go to the live class you learn you get excited but what's the probability that the next day you're gonna have a, a, a line design to do probably pretty low so when that opportunity comes you have the online workshop to just review in great detail every concept you learn in class and and you can go take one lesson and go do part of that lesson that lesson has a an actual deliverable that you will be able to do for your actual line design so this is the reason why we put together this bundle for you because we really want you to become an expert at line design. okay and that discount code we're showing you here bundle that's the discount code bundle that's oh yeah literally oh, the discount bundle. Code. there you go yeah. yeah use that discount code and we're making this a very, very attractive offer. So, and uh, remember that there are only 32 seats for the class. Now, for for the online for the online version, there is no limit. So, any of you who wants to sign up, don't tell up, them that. Next, <laughs> oh, yeah. Generate a sense of scarcity. <laughs> exactly, but only 32 seats. So, only 32 of you will get this this bundle. Okay, so that's what is it, fourteen ninety five then? With yeah, the, with yeah, we'll make it fourteen ninety five. Look at that, All a right, picture of us. Are. Here we are. 
Is yeah, we have we have finished in an hour. Uh, you Let's know, do. some of you that have been with us before know that every now and again we, we go over. over. We, we run over. It just can't help but to but but to talk about this. So, uh, with that in mind, what we'd like to do is to um, say goodbye. Thank you for being with us. Make sure that you do send us your uh, your feedback if there are any topics that you'd like us to address around mixed model line design and mixed model material management please let us know we have uh, we take that seriously we have uh, delivered several um several webinars on the basis of your feedback so we want to hear from you what you think what you want to hear on about and also please take a look at linkedin if you're on linkedin please connect with us on LinkedIn. Gerard Leone, that's me. Richard Run, that's him. Look us up, you will find us. But uh, we will make sure that we'll send you a link to find us and connect with us. We want to stay in touch. We want to uh, disseminate this knowledge to as many okay, folks as possible. Okay, now you will get an email later in the afternoon with the replay link. Uh, so if you want to view it again or review, you'll have that available. In that, uh, in that email, you'll also get a link to connect to us on LinkedIn. So you don't have to search for us. You should be able to just click on that link and connect with us directly. Yep. Make it easier. Okay, so thanks again. Enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you all. Bye.